Oh hey guys, welcome back. You are with your host Azrin and you are watching the Kandama News Network. There's a ton of news for the month of June, so I'll get straight to it, beginning with the miscellaneous news. Back, Eugene Gill announced the closure of Risen Kandamas to devote more of his time towards building on Dama On. It's sad to see Risen go, but where one door closes, another one opens. All the best for Dama On, Mac. I thought this was cool, Tyler Dimitri and Christiana over at the LEGO Rebriculous show on YouTube each built Damas out of LEGO. So they invited Brendan over as Kendama Guru to teach them tricks and then test out the LEGO built Kendamas. So go peep the episode. And next up, I'm pretty sure most of my viewers know Kozorov. What is lesser known is since September 2015, she uploaded the trick every day on Instagram. And three years later, she has finally reached her thousands trick. That last spike is bittersweet for her because she also remarried on the same stage afterwards. Congratulations Kozorov. It takes so much perseverance to get this far and it is truly a unique achievement which I doubt anyone could replicate. This one is also really cool. Sweets Kendama is partnered up with Kendama Institute. It is a non-profit by Tyler Abramson and Joshua Grove. Their mission is to educate the global community about the physical, social and mental benefits that Kendamas offer and the results have been amazing. This is really what Kendama is all about. A simple toy with a power Powerful ability to teach useful lifelong skills. I mean, we need more of these everywhere. Head out to Sweets blog and read all about it. Huge props to Sweets and Key for doing this. Keep it up, guys. Moving on to releases. Crumb's Orange Camo debuted in November and was well received. Taking advantage of that, Crumb introduced two new colorways for the Camo, featuring the same can, of course, only with a different Tama color, green and purple. Celebrating Pride Month, Sweets collaborated with Min Kanama Minneapolis to introduce the version 2 Pride Dama. Kanama Minneapolis developed the Rainbow Fade in the Sweets lab, and Sweets finished it off with the Kush Clear. Five US dollars from every Dama sold is donated to Glisten, a US-based education organization which aims to create safe and inclusive environments in schools. Sweets also collaborated with Japanese company Spin Gear to bring you this prime. It features four stripes, signifying the two companies, purple green which is the original Sweets logo, orange red for Spin Gear. It also comes with a white bottom 30 for tracking. Only 50 are available so get them before it's gone. Kusa introduced a brand new craft shape called Shift. It features larger cups an overall larger can with Tama size, a redefined slip stop and tracking lines, also updated craft bevel. The first four releases under this shape are the Yellow Birch, Hickory, Ash and Maple. It comes with Kusa bearing standard with this pretty neat craft bag. Deal with it out of a new shape and this new version 2 shape has larger big cups and also base cups. Comes with a drilled base cup and Matt says it feels more substantial in your hands. That's really up for you to decide. Bearing beads now come standard. The version 2 shape launched with two classic colorways, the Maryland and the Purple People Eaters. Both come in rubber or sticky AF. The second iteration of the Jared Potter model is out. There are upgrades. Firstly, a new can shape, but I would like to tell you this is not a deal with it version 2 shape. It is totally different. It is totally designed by JP. It totally has larger cups and overall size and also evened out cup stall points. A new handle stall and slip ring. Tama stays better. A bullet tip drill base cup and better paint to make the Tama lines last longer. Deal With It also released a 5 panel tweet cap. It is Amblazon with a leather Deal With It dog patch currently available in green and only 30 May. Deal With It Pro Chihiro Bato designed a brand new Deal With It tee, a very simplistic one. This almost looks like a wearable business card, if I may be frank with you. It is fully produced by Bounce Kagoshima. This is the crew that Chihiro was originally with and it comes all the way in double XL. So if you want one of these, holler up Chihiro on her Instagram. She'll be happy to oblige while stocks last. Building upon the success of the recently launched E1's Green Theory this month release both the Roku and Stitch designs in three new colors. They are called Ice Blue, Classic Red, and Vintage Teal. This next one GT released was supposed to debut in Weekend in the Woods, but you all know what happened. So GT did an online release of their very first rubber paint in the E1 shape with special Weekend in the Woods engravings. Comes with a orange 70 white 30 paint job with some green up top for tracking. This is called the Explorer and unfortunately it is sold out. Terra introduced a special edition skate ply prefect in black. 
but why is it special? The black skate ply will only be reserved for hand turning, meaning that they'll be treated with extra love and care by Alex Smith himself. Saul Kandamas commissioned a vibe designed by Liam Browder called the Red Koi. It features a white top with red stripe and natty bottom with black stripe for tracking. Tama is silk coated and as always, all vibes come with maple cans. Active Kandamas introduced a new version 3 shape called ZND. No idea why ZND, but what I can tell you is deeper, larger cups, wider Serato, 22mm Tama bevel. Man, everyone's upsizing this year. The V3 ZND is available now in Bamboo and Beach and also all for Pro Mods. Anol Kandamas has also worked on a new shape and they are proud to bring you the Squab, featuring larger wider cups, drill base cup, dual burn lines on the Tama and satin paint. The first prototype dropped in Maple. They even come with a little feedback card to help analog with development. Yasai Kendama's second drop is out and in keeping with the vegetable theme, this one is called the corn. A triple split yellow and green with silk paint and green string. I can't wait to see what's next from uh, Yasai Kendama's. Continuing on with Japan, TKT's Kozarov spotted a new Kendama at the recent Tokyo Toy Fair. It's from JKA partner Gentosha and they call it Sports Kendama. In line with JKA founder Kazuo Fujiwara's vision to view Kendama as a sport. This is a rubber 6040 config, sadly a prototype for now, so we will know more about this in autumn. Kenholic's most successful model to date, the Grunge Marble, gets a new design called Warm. And as the previous model, this looks downright amazing. If you haven't heard of Kenholic's yet, I have nothing but praise despite not only one yet. They don't pay me to say this, but do me a favor and go check them out. One of Kentholic's classic colorways is back. The triple smoke stripe is what it says. It originally released in white. Now it is available in red and yellow and it is also striped with, well, smoke paint. And shall I say it's smoking hot? It's smoking hot. Kentholic's also released this a tee with what seems to be a skull snacking on a kendama. So many questions to answer, but I digress. It is called Snack of Skull, and it is such a rad design. I love it. 66% is a yo-yo company hailing from Japan. They work with other yo-yo companies to introduce smaller versions of their flagship models. They shrink the yo-yo's diameter to about 38 millimeters, that being the practical minimum diameter for a yo-yo, and scaled the width to approximately 66% of the original size. Hence, the name 66% now collaborated with Yamagata Kobo to bring you the world's first JK special certified full aluminum kendama. This is in the works at the moment, not officially out yet. I'm hoping to see this launch during the JK Open Festa in a few weeks from now. This one is a raw aluminum can with a red anodized aluminum tama. I want to try to get my hands on one of these bad boys because they look amazing. It is truly one for the collector's books. In conjunction with the FIFA World Cup, Yamagata Kobo collaborated with the Japan Football Association to introduce the Ozora Samurai Blue. It is basically a regular blue Ozora with the JFA decal on the Tama and Samurai Blue. The Japan football team's current nickname is also printed on the can. Remember last month I told you that Yamagata Kobo will debut a new shape during KWC? Images have surfaced online and this is what it looks like. It's called the Ozora Reshape RS for short. The RS is the latest and the most unexpected Kendama to join the recent upsizing wave of 2018. The cups are all bigger and what makes the RS even more unexpected is the JK seal of recommendation. It's really something I least expect from them. I am pleased with the look I can't wait to try one out. Kudos for taking the brave step towards change. There will also be three other damas joining the RS set to debut at KWC and this next one is by Sangha. They've been pretty low-key company. They've refined their design a little with a deeper larger base cup and they've enlarged the Tama bevel and they are proud to introduce to you the Haskai series. Haskai is derived from the traditional Japanese word of diagonal. It features a half split diagonal spectrus on top and also a natty bottom half. There are four variants, the Maple Honoki or the Japanese Magnolia, the Maple Paddock, Maple Sakura or the Japanese Cherrywood and finally Maple Purple Heart. They also have matching base cup wood. Pretty cool. This next one is from Dendama who introduced us the second version of their app enabled Kendama. It is called Gummy. Not many details are out yet, just new colorways inspired from gummy candy and new content for their app. I guess we'll have to wait till KWC 
to see. And last but not least, Yonemura will introduce the Legacy's Koi Fish series with improvements to the can, a wider serrado and a larger base cup, and the Tama engraving is inspired by Koi skills. It offers tactile feedback and grip, features a 50-50 half split with tracking rings at the bottom. The Koi Fish series comes in two designs, the red Sun Shoku and the yellow Kyutsuri, and I believe this will only be offered in Maple. Serial Kandama released a new shape called the Serial Shape. This upgrade has a thinner Kansaki wider serrado and feather base cup and sharper cut serrado angles and released with this new shape a new line of damas called home arch and amalgamation of homer and marge from the simpsons very simple triple stripe design with an easily recognizable color palette for both moving on to teams analog kendamas couldn't help but get attracted by his personality trick vocabulary and progression and is happy to welcome edwin tickner to the analog Flow team. Congratulations. Mac announced a new team lineup for Dama on. Five people in total, and they are Chris Snow, Kyle Black and Bicker, Randy Cornett, Tristan Scott, and Alex Naranyo. Congrats to all five of you. During Camp Kandama, Sweets announced Joshua Grove aboard the team and also premiered his team edit. I am so happy for Josh. He's such an amazing player with a very good flow, and I was wondering why Sweets took so long to have him aboard, and we now know why. So congratulations buddy. Singaporean Kendama company Siri Kendama is stoked to bump Nicole Sia to pro. Nicole is not alien to the scene. She's one of the gnarliest female shredders out there having taken third place in last year's All Girls video contest. Can't wait to see more gnarly tricks come out of her. Congrats girl. He's shown a whole lot of love for Kendholics and the Japanese Kendama scene. So Kendholics is excited to announce one of three Dama crew Stephen Sargent as the 12th member of the Kendholics crew. Stephen will be a great help in bridging the gap between the Japanese and Western Kandama Seas. So congratulations, man. <laughs> now this is really, really weird to report, partly because it concerns myself and I've never had to report about myself before, but it's gonna happen sometime, right? And news is news. So I am excited and honored to announce that I am now part of the Spingear Kandama family and I am very happy to be alongside an amazing family. Tajima Akira, Fukushima Yutaro, and also Nagata Kazuki. Take care of me. And I look forward to your guidance. Thank you. All right, <laughs> moving on. Uh, having been a cornerstone in the growth of German Kendama community, Crum is proud to bring about Nick Patberg as Crum Ambassador, where he will join Troy and Finn in helping create bigger, better, and more sustainable Kendama communities. And moving on to events. For MKO this year, Sweets inked a deal with a new hotel, the Double Tree by Hilton, and along with it comes a ton of great perks, a 24-7 Dama space, conveniently located right in the middle, facing all the rooms. The hotel is also theirs for the entirety of MKO means you can get to play without bothering anyone. It looks like a great space, easy access to the pool, great rooms. Matt says it costs a little bit more than usual, but with all perks, I think it's a steal. The 2018 Singapore National Kandama Championship went down. Three categories were contested and in the beginners, third place Hans Wong Jensen, second place Marcus Lim, first place Jonathan Lee, and in advance, third place James Lim, second place Nicole Sia, and first place Brian Toh. And finally, in King of Flow, Ariel Ibran takes the win. Congratulations, everyone. Entries for the KWC Asia Oceania video contest ended, and Hong Kong's Lao Chun Ho and Australia's Albert Ngo will winners of their respective area and were sent to Taiwan to compete for the Asia Seed. Which brings me to the next topic, the Asia Oceania prelims. This is held in Kaohsiung, Taiwan. It is still ongoing as I am recording this, so I am unable to provide you results, but I offer my congratulations in advance to the winners. And also at this time of the recording, Glocken will hold the KWC Japan prelims tomorrow. It will be held in Tokyo and this will be the event for Japanese players to fight for a seed to this year's KWC finals. And of course, a round trip to Hatsukaichi. All the best to those competing. Uh, who do you think will secure the seed? I think Spin Years Yutaro Fukushima. <laughs> We'll take it. The Finnish Kendama Open went down early June in Turku, Finland. And in the beginner division, third place Anna Kaila Kivranta, second place Suzona Sokas, first place Matthias Naka, and in the open division, third place Kendama Israel's Oli Ball ties with Krom's Marcus Lander, second place Troika's Albert Kirvesmaki, and first place, well, you know it, 
Trump's Rolf Sandvik Gunner. Summer bumped Rolf to pro already, man. He's been conquering the entirety of Europe. Bump him up to pro and just call him the Viking for God's sakes. The Swedish Kandama Championships went down in Yevle and two categories were contested in the freestyle division. Third place goes to Philip Sandgren, second place to Rafael Kosciolek, and first place to Krams Lucas Sandgren. In the open division, third place again Lucas Sandgren, second place Wilhelm Elkerud, and first place Oliver Melby. Congratulations to all winners. KWC is due in less than 3 weeks and if you can't make it over fret not, Loken will provide the live stream on YouTube as usual. And as for those who have bought plane tickets and are gearing up for KWC, I highly recommend reading the article I wrote last year, uh, it's in the uh, description of course, to better prepare yourselves for KWC. That's out of the way, I want to talk a little bit about Japan itself. It's a beautiful country with beautiful people and beautiful culture, but they look at things differently than the Western world. Things that seem fine and silly and laughable to Westerners will probably turn out differently to the Japanese. Uh, an example of this is feelings and confrontations. Westerners tend to be loud, outspoken, and expressive. Not that there's anything bad with that. The Japanese they're not that. They are less of those things. They keep to themselves a lot. It's really pretty hard to tell what they're truly thinking. What I really want to get to is, while it's great to have fun and experience Japanese culture and Japan as a whole, let's not forget to be respectful to the people and everything around us during the KWZ tour. I mean, it isn't our country to begin with. So, wreaking havoc like, you know, stealing forklifts or illegally breaking to and climbing up uh, construction sites it kind of represents kandamas badly as a whole and it puts the people in charge of handling us well in this case Glocken, in a very tight and difficult spot let's keep in mind that the world sees what we do and i would really hate for us to be the next logan paul so Spend a little bit of time to check up on etiquettes in Japan. I, I mean, even learn a word or two in Japanese. I mean, it never hurts to learn another language. And the locals may even warm up to you more. So to end it all, I wish all my viewers a happy trip to KWC. For those who have never been and this is your first time, it is a wonderful experience. One that you will remember for a very, very long time. So have fun, come back again for more, and be careful of oncoming taxis. You know who you are. And oh, one more thing. I am happy to inform that I will be able to make it this year to KWC. I am super stoked to meet the Dama fam, both old and new faces. And from this point onward, till the end of KWC, I will be happy to offer whatever limited knowledge I have on Japan to help and guide those attending. So ask me in the comments or better yet, ask me in person. I'm staying, I, I'm the same pendejo. So approach me. I don't bite. See you in KWC. And that's it. Thanks again for tuning in. Don't get left behind folks. That's what the subscribe button is for. Hit the bell icon at the bottom to get buzzed when new content comes out. The name is Azrin and until next month. Oh wait, um, no. Kay and I will be taking a break next month. I'll be focused on having fun and helping people out. So, see you in September for the August news. Till then, stay lit. Dama on. Bye. Ah, uh, yeah. Ah, uh, this is tough.